time to put the bridle on <clears throat> my kite. And uh, before I do that, I like to reinforce the parts of the kite that I think are prone to damage. And I do it with small pieces of tape. I'm using black tape here just so it's easy to see, but packing tape or scotch tape or any kind of tape that bonds really well to the material you're using for the kite skin will work fine, doesn't really matter. But I put it right at the point where the nose leading edge meets the bow. That's a point where I have found it could potentially damage the kite skin based on what happens to the kite in a crash or in some other disastrous way <laughs> that the kite flies. And then I put one at the wingtips because sometimes the flying line, either yours or your opponent, will get caught right at the wingtip and it'll slice through the skin. So to help minimize that, I put a piece, small piece of tape on each wingtip. I hope you can see that. And it shows up on the other side a little bit as well. And then I also add a, just a almost square piece at the tail and also at the nose to help strengthen those points because that's where uh, the kite gets an awful lot of abuse from the wind in those two areas. So now the kite's really protected and I now am ready to put the bridle on and what I do is I use a ruler lay it across the uh, spine and line up a mark on the ruler. This one's on the four, four inch mark. And measure on each side an equal amount. I usually use a spacing between the spine, the center of the spine and the bridle point on the bow about an inch and a quarter on each side of the spine. Sometimes an inch and a half, sometimes an inch. It depends on the size of the kite for me. I'm not sure that it makes a tremendous amount of difference, but on this kite, I'm going to mark it at one and one quarter inch right here on each side of the spine. I'm just making a mark on the skin, on the back side of the skin. And what I'm going to do now is put another piece of tape at those points because that's where I'm going to uh, have my bridle line go through, and that also can be a place where the kite skin can get damaged from uh, the bridle line moving so much during flight. So I put a piece of tape on the end of a toothpick, lift the bow up a little bit, and slide the tape and make sure the tape is on the mark I just made. And I do that on both sides. Now, I then remeasure it and remark it. So it's a little redundant, of course, but it seems to work pretty well overall. The other place I reinforce is the uh, point where I'm going to bond the spine to the bow, which is right here. So I put a piece of tape, using a toothpick here, on 
the skin over the spine so that when I poke my holes through, the holes are, are the kite skin holes are protected with the tape. And it's, and so far, and I've done this for several years this way, and I don't recall ever having a kite skin tear as a result of uh, bridal line or anything else because it's so well protected with these little tiny pieces of tape. So now I re-measure it and mark. Now my tape is black. I probably shouldn't have made it black, but I'm going to use a silver marker because of that. But if you use clear tape or if you use uh, tape that uh, you can see your marker with, you know, that's going to be better. And then I'll put a mark here and here for each of the lines that I'm going to put there. Now, what I do is, and maybe this is again just totally redundant, but um, I puncture, I use a needle. This is like a darning needle or some kind of a large needle. And uh, I just have a end cap over it so I can press it without hurting my fingers. <laughs> but I just puncture it right where my mark is. So I know with my soldering pencil exactly where to melt the hole. You can hear it puncture the kite skin. Now I use my soldering pencil and I raise up the bow with my hands. I hope you can see that. I'm not sure you can. But I raise it up so it's not on the kite back of the kite skin because I don't want the soldering pencil to come in contact with the carbon fiber. If it does, the carbon fiber will melt and instantly bend at a right angle. And you don't want that. So I simply just melt a little hole here and here and these two here. So it looks like uh, looks like this, I guess, or more like this. Now, what I do is uh, put a piece of wax paper under the bowl. Get my ruler out again, and I move my stops, which are these yellow pieces of heat shrink tubing that I put on the bow before I installed it in the kite. And I use a super glue and I just put a little bit of super glue on a piece of wax paper. And then with a toothpick, I apply it to each side of the bow and then slide the uh, heat shrink tubing over to the glue and it bonds just about instantly. And I'll just leave that. Now the next thing I do is cut another piece of tape, small piece of tape, another piece of protection, and I put it at the point where I'm going to poke a hole through the skin for 
the lower bridal connection point on the spine. In this case, it'll be right about in here. So I do that. And then I melt a hole through here on each side of the spine. Oops, I think I got some of that on here, didn't I? Huh. Well, that's not going to work so good. Stuff happens when you're building kites, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just does. Okay, so now I'm ready to install the bridle. And uh, I use Daycron braided Daycron fishing line for my bridle material. And that's it's about a 16 pound test strength. It's, it's very hard to break <laughs> and quite small in diameter. It may be too small to see easily here, but uh, I just cut off a few pieces here for the bridle. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the bridle is three pieces of line. It has a piece that goes that connects to the bow, like this. And it has another one that connects that one to the tail. And then it has another piece that is used as the connecting point between the bridle and your flying line called a uh, this the toe point. And it slides up and down on the bridle line to allow for adjusting in that direction. And I use beeswax or paraffin, either one, but some kind of a wax, and I wax my line. Now I just run it through the wax so once or twice is enough. And on the piece that goes to the to the bow, I only Put wax in the center part. Well, sometimes it gets all over it, but that's the way, I guess. Okay, so it's not too critical. You don't have to use wax. It just helps the knots hold, and it allows the adjustments that you make to the bridle to stay put. And uh, that's always a nice feature. So I turn the kite over to its uh, front side and run the uh, one end of the upper bridle through the hole I made and then around the bow and back through the hole. Pretty simple. So that's, and I just tie a knot that holds. Doesn't matter what kind you use, any kind that you know that'll hold well, just go ahead and use that. And uh, it's the only aspect that matters is that the knot doesn't come undone. Now, because I use the stops on the bow itself, whoops, uh, I don't glue the bridle to the bow. Now, if you don't use stops, you'll want to glue it with a drop of super glue. And many kite makers prefer that to the other. I'm not one of them, obviously. Now, on the other side, I do the same thing. Pretty simple stuff. No fancy knot, 
unless you like fancy knots and want to put one in there, go ahead. <laughs> now, this is, the, this is important. <clears throat> you don't want the upper bridle line length after it's tied to be able to reach beyond the nose of the kite. If it does, believe me, it will get tangled in the nose and the kite will crash. Simple as that. So you don't want this to reach beyond the tip of the nose. You want the, I put it about a quarter to three eighths of an inch below the nose, just to make sure it doesn't go over and uh, allow the kite to crash without my knowing why. And uh, it's surprising if it does reach that far, if, the, if this loop reaches up to or beyond the nose, it's just going to catch the nose and it's going to crash the kite. It's Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law of Kiting, I guess. <laughs> now, on the lower bridle, which is the next piece we're going to install, um, the first thing you do is you put a loop in one end. I just make a loop about, oh, I would say that's uh, three inches, maybe two and a half inches. Some of it will be used with a knot. And then I tie a knot on it. I use a figure eight knot, but you can use just a regular old any knot. And I got a loop. And I cut the tail off. I leave a little bit there. I'm not sure why, but I do. So there's my loop on the end of the lower bridle line. And this loop I put under the upper bridle line that I've tied. And then I feed the rest of the line, the lower bridle line, through that loop so that it becomes a lark's head knot, like this. And I pull it towards the spine so it's in the center of the kite to tighten it. Then I bring the lower bridle line to the point on the kite where I want to tie the other end. And this kite, I've never made this size or this exact shape before, so I'm going to experiment with where on the uh, kite I should put the lower bridle point. I'm going to start right here. I think this will work well. But this is another important aspect of how you tie your bridle. Uh, you do not want this lower bridle line to be able to reach the wingtip of the kite. For the same reason, you don't want the upper bridle to reach the nose. If this does reach or go beyond the wingtip, it will snag on the wingtip, guarantee you. Probably the first time you fly the kite, it'll do that. <laughs> Just to prove it can do it. <laughs> that seems to be the way it works. And I just tie a uh, knot here and uh, cut off the excess. Then I use a the, the other piece of line, which I'll wax up a little more. And this is the toe point. This is where I'll connect my flying line to the kite. And I just loop it over, uh, fold it in half, loop it over and tie a knot, make a loop. I like uh, figure eight knots, but they can be any, any knot that'll hold. 
Okay, so here we have a loop. With a knot on one end. I use this knot to hold my line, my flying line, on the kite bridle using a lark's head knot. I use a lark's head knot also, just like I did to connect the two bridle points here at the upper bridle line. I use a lark's head knot to attach the toe point to the lower bridle line. So now it's on there. I can slide it anywhere I want it. And once I get it to where I want it, and I'll show you where that is in a second, then all I have to do is snug it up and it'll lock in there. And that's that. So that's a nice thing about a lark's head knot. It's a lockable, adjustable knot and very simple to tie. Now, the idea of how do you set the kite up after the bridle's on and before you fly it, what do you do to, to assure that when you do go to fly it, it'll probably fly well? And some people call this table tuning. Uh, it was just probably a good term for it. It's like getting a kite ready before you fly it to give you the best chance of it not needing any other adjustment to fly the way you want it, except maybe very minor, minor adjustments. So what I do is position this toe point on the lower bridle line where the nose of the kite is about two inches above the surface of my workbench here, and the tail of the kite is touching the workbench. So the kite tail is touching, and the nose is about two inches off. Now that usually will make the kite, when, when you put it in the air, it'll make the kite climb, which is what you want. You don't want it just to stall. The other thing I do is I position, I, I bend the bamboo spine. Now, I'm just doing it here on my work surface, but I often just put it against my stomach where the heat of my body helps to set this curve in the bamboo. Now, I just gently bend it. I don't have to have very much of a bend in there, but I do want some when I start flying the kite. And this is how I do it. Now, when the tail of the kite if I hold the front face of the kite down on my work surface after I put the bend in it, I want the nose of the kite to be off of the work surface by about a half to three quarters of an inch. That's how much of a bend I want in the spine. And that will allow the kite to spin well. And when I retrieve the line and, and increase the tension on the line, the kite will fly straight. That's the combination of things, uh, of the balance of the spine shape, the amount of curve, uh, all aspects of it are important to get it to do that. Now the last thing I need to do is simply tie the bow to the spine. And I just do it with a, another piece of line that I stick in the little holes I made. And uh,
No, they both came on one side. Okay, well, that's good. And then I just tie it securely. Now, again, this is optional. You don't have to do this. I like it better. I think the uh, reaction time of the kite is quicker. And for me, that's important. Uh, in, in competition flying, it's important. If doing line touch or other competition games, uh, I find it important to have that extra speed of maneuverability, the quickness. But just for flying it for fun, it probably doesn't make any difference. And there I have my finished kite, all table tuned, ready to fly. You can see if I just pull on the line, just, just jerk on the bridle, it just shoots right up. It's ready to go. It, it wants to fly. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. And if you've got any questions, email me at kitefighter at yahoo.com. And if I know the answer, I'll be happy to answer your question.